Okay, thank you. Well, good uh, good afternoon or good evening, everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and convene the committee, the whole meeting for Monday, May 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. We have two items on the agenda. Well, we, we have one item on the agenda with two parts, the 2020 Benefits and Liability Insurance Review. Uh, we have a benefits presentation and an insurance review. And uh, let's see. Council Ellen, President? Yes, please. May I, may I do the introduction of the first speaker, please? Would you? Thank you. Absolutely. Good evening, Council Members and uh, Council President Corman. It is my honor to uh, present Wendy Ritterizer, our HR Benefits Manager. She's worked for the city for almost four years now, and she has really, uh, she's really put Renton on the map with regard to benefits and our deferred comp program. I, I'm excited to, to uh, have you hear her presentation tonight. Wendy? Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to share my screen here, make sure that this works. So if anybody has questions as we go along, um, please um, just feel free to jump right in. Um, we can just make this as, um, as interactive as you like. Um, I have presented to the council each year, so I just want to check and make sure you can see, um, you're able to see my screen with the presentation. Oh, yes. Great. Um, so this is um, an annual presentation, so many of the council members will be familiar with the material. And first, I'm going to talk about our employee benefits, and that falls into two areas where the city is self-funded. And one is our retirement savings plan that we'll talk about first, and then our um, health plan. And so uh, uh, with our retirement savings plan, we offer a deferred comp plan that falls under tax code 457B. And that's in addition to the pension plan that you're probably all familiar with, the PERS plan that the state operates. Our plan is a multi-employer plan. We um, have joint governance with the RFA. It was originally a plan that covered both entities. And when um, the two organizations separated, it made sense to keep one plan for economies of scale. We get um, better rates based on that. So the, our governance structure there are four voting members, um, the city's CAO and the Renton um, uh, Regional Fire Authority's fire chief, and then two administrators. Um, and this is um, in our um, bylaws. And the committee operates very transparently and welcomes involvement of all employees. We have regular attendance by both the unions and non-represented staff, and we publish all of our material in advance and keep everything on SharePoint. Um, we, we do have a very engaged population. And the committee are, um, they are fiduciaries, and which means that they're legally bound to act in the best interest of the plan participants. Um, their primary goals are to keep the rates and expenses low and to offer um, uh, good investment options and to provide participant education. So we work with our vendors who are co-fiduciaries on the plan and follow investment policy statement and operating guidelines that were adopted by the committee and um, have been given previously to the council. Um, the fees and expenses that we keep for this plan are very low compared to industry standards. That's important because the fees and expenses are paid by the participants out of their accounts, but the committee is the one who negotiates those fees. And so, as you can see, um, we do keep our, our expenses that our participants pay low compared to the national benchmark averages. And the committee regularly reviews the performance of the funds. We offer a, a wide range of funds with various risk and reward return characteristics. So um, the majority of our employees um, prospectively are putting their, their funds into multi-asset or target date funds. Um, if you're familiar with that, and those are funds where the participant doesn't have to go in and select individual investment categories. They simply go into a fund that is appropriate for their um, their age, if you will. So they say, 
typically the year they they would be eligible for full retirement. So 2030, 2035, 2040, et cetera. There are funds for each of those five-year increments. And then Vanguard uh, manages the investments to appropriate risk um, strategy based on that age and it reduces the risk as the individual gets closer to retirement. So that's very popular and common in retirement plans and something that, um, as you'll see on a future slide here, more of our employees are putting money into. Also, for those who want to make their own mix, we offer core funds in a variety of investment options. And then for those who are very savvy investors and really just want um, to do it themselves, we have a brokerage window so they can invest completely outside of the plan. Now, this shows where we, the money that is going in, um, the total assets, we have just under 130 million, and you can see um, where those are invested, the multi-asset fixed income, and then the largest portion in stocks. But prospectively, we've had 7 million go in this past year, and prospectively, as you can see here in the purple, more people are putting money into the multi-asset, those target date funds that's becoming an increasingly popular option among participants. We work with um, our investment um, um, record keeper is TIAA, and we work with TIAA to provide participant education, um, both targeted mailings and then um, also in-person meetings. So our participants get information different information for somebody who's just hired and might be in their uh, late 20s or early 30s compared to somebody who might be nearing retirement. So the, the information is targeted. Also, someone who is invested in a way that might not be considered um, um, a traditional approach for their age, too conservative, too aggressive, will also get some targeted communication. Um, so those things have worked really well. And um, that is my summary of our deferred compensation plan. Do we have any questions? Uh, does council have any questions at this time? I, I, don't, I don't see any. Thank you. Okay, great. We'll go ahead and, and talk about the health plan. So the city is self-insured on our, our medical, dental, and vision plan. So we, we do offer a fully insured plan where participants can buy insurance through Kaiser, but very few of our employees do that. Most elect to go into the city's plan and um, the risk or reward of that rests with um, both our employees and the city. So if the city, if the plan is well managed and our employees are, are good consumers of those healthcare dollars, it saves us money. Um, the city being the sponsor is, again, a planned fiduciary, so we're required to operate in the best interest of those participants and be good fiduciaries of the plan and those dollars. We have a Renton Employee Health Plan Board that makes the decision. There are just three voting members. Our city CAO and the two union presidents are the three voting members. And then there's a cost share between the city and the employees. And that cost share is negotiated through a collective bargaining agreement that is approved by the council. So the cost share, the 91%, 9%, which is what is currently approved, is negotiated in the bargaining unit agreement. And then the rates or the premiums are set each year based on actuarial projections of what the costs will be for the coming year. Now, we are self-insured, but we do have stop loss, and stop loss is really kind of like a very high deductible plan. So the city budget covers all of the expenses for people's medical care. Unless an individual goes over $250,000 in a year, and then our stop loss insurance picks that up. So we are protected against really catastrophic, catastrophic costs. We also offer some fully insured plans, and that's life insurance, disability insurance, and an employee assistance program. Oops, I think I put that. And um, also a flexible spending account where people can put money away on a pre-tax basis um, to cover some expenses. Um, our vendor fees, so we contract with HMA, is our, um, our third-party administrator that actually processes, approves, and pays the claims and council approved 
approves these contracts each year at our renewal at the, towards the end of the calendar year. We had a 2.5% increase in our HMA, which is the administrator for our self-insured, and then you can see the, the premium increases for each of the other plans. Um, the, then the premiums that our employees pay, so that's what we're paying our vendors to administer the plan. And then the money that we're setting aside in the healthcare fund in order for to pay all of those um, healthcare expenses, that again is the cost share between the employees and the city. And the medical plan increase was 3.7% um, this year. Um, our stop loss premiums were had a considerable increase into the, um, the expenses. Dental plans dropped and vision plan increased. Um, so that was, um, we used to put, combine those dental and vision into one, and we decided to separate those out because some, when someone leaves employment and they want to go on COBRA, they can buy just one or the other. So we had our actuaries separate that. Um, life insurance didn't change, and then you can see a small change in the employee assistance program and then no change in flex. These next two slides, I think, are a really interesting visual. This shows all of the expenses. Um, you can see we stack them on top of each other to get the total expenses for the year. Um, city programs, that's the cost of administering, so the benefit staff salary and benefits. So you can see that our, our, in our cost, our total expenses for our medical plan, we hear in the media all the time about how the costs of medical plans are going up so dramatically. And at the city, they're just not. You can see that we did have from 2007, uh, 2017 to 2018, we had an 8% increase. And then next year we had a 5.6% decrease and then a 2.7% increase. So you can see that we've really maintained, if you go all the way back to 2014, um, we're, we're practically flat um, over those years with just small increases and decreases over time. So the city has, has actually done a really good job um, keeping healthcare costs down. I really um, have to credit in part, um, it's the, the board and the administration of the plan, but it's also the communication and um, partnering with our unions. The unions do a really good job of talking to the members about the importance of being very good consumers of the, the healthcare spend, making good choices, and, um, and I think we're, that's part of our success. And then we do have a good wellness program as well. So those things are, are very important. Now that's how much money it, the plan is costing, the spend. The next plan, slide is about the reserves. This is um, a little bit um, uh, complicated, but basically it shows um, how much the reserves are in the plan. So we have to set aside money to pay expenses and the state requires that we have at least 30% of the projected costs for the upcoming year held in reserve. Um, that's the minimum. And so we don't want to be just at the minimum because um, then if expenses are higher than expected, we would drop below that. So um, our, the board's target is to range between 30 and 40. So you can see what our reserves have been historically. And the reason why this line jumps up each year is because the actuary projects an increase in our costs and so therefore we have to have an increase in reserves. You can see that um, reserves started building and we're getting significantly above what, what is necessary. And so what the board um, proposed was to have a rate holiday or a premium holiday. So neither the city nor the employees put any money into premiums for a full month. It saved the city almost a million dollars. I think it was 960 some thousand um, dollars during a time of COVID when, when the budget was very tight. And employees also didn't contribute to the plan. And so you can see it really drew down our reserves, but it didn't put us in a dangerous territory. So that was one of the, the cost saving measures that worked out pretty well for, for us. And now you can see the range here, and this is the future. Um, it takes us a little while to get each month closed and posted um, because we have to wait for the claims to run out. So you can see that if 
plan if the expenses run exactly at projected this is where we'll be if they run above projected then the reserves will drop down below that line and if they run below projected they'll climb above i hope i hope that makes sense i think this is a good visual to see where we're at and then for those of you who prefer to see it just in numbers you can see what um, our beginning reserves were and what our minimum and our um, the reserve balance and then the money that went in the money that went out the money we were reimbursed by stop loss because somebody went or a few people went over the amount and then what ended up being our reserves at the end and the change in reserve balance so that's um, just kind of a high level picture of the health plan and how that's doing do you have any questions um, I'll start out with uh, just a comment that um, a really good presentation uh, and great work just overseeing those funds and uh, it looks really good. Um, it's great to see that the medical is, is not climbing that fast. I love hearing about how everybody's working together to manage that. And so thank you so much for that. Um, with that, I'd like to see if council has any questions or comments. Um, I don't see any hands raised. Um, uh, okay, so um, are, are we, uh, I think we're ready to move to the second part. Great, uh, so um, next oh, I'm I'm sorry. To... There is a question now uh, from uh, Kim Todd has a question. Oh, not, not so, yeah, not so much of a question, just wanted to say I appreciate the, the fact that you were differentiating and actually uh, separating the vision and the, 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 the dental. Uh, part right, so kind of just giving more options as far as when it comes to the cobra. So thank you for that. Thank you. And I just kind of one last thing. Our employees very much value the health plan. Um, it's something that um, they do not take for granted. It's a really quality health plan with um, fairly low um, point of service fees. So um, the copays and, and deductibles and amounts that people have to pay. Um, are very competitive and, and people know that and we talk about it a lot and promote it and I think it's very much appreciated. And so it's, it's money well spent. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Kelsey. Kelsey is our risk manager and she's been with the city for a little over three years and um, I'll turn it over to Kelsey. Okay, thanks Wendy. Yes, thank you Wendy. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we do have a bit of content here, so I am going to just jump right in and mm -hmm. get going. Um, let's see, let me move that. All right. Okay, so um, I'll be taking us through the 2020 um, review of our insurance fund, the 502 insurance fund. And I want to start off with setting the stage here with the big picture. The expenditures in the 502 account are about three million each year and those come from three big buckets or categories of of cost of spending as well as replenishment of funds through subrogation on line four so both in and out of the insurance fund unfortunately may, mainly out um, the biggest category here of of costs are one and two the first being claim losses for all of our workers' compensation, unemployment, liability claims, as well as some of the property damages that the city suffers. Those come out of the 502 fund. Insurance premiums for both of our excess insurance as well as straight insurance are from the 502 fund. Um, and then the administrative expenses in order to run those programs. So I'm gonna take us through those four categories. So for losses and claims, we do have limitations to how much we spend from this, this account um, and losses and claims from the account. And you see that here with our self-insured retentions as well as our deductibles for the various lines of coverage. So starting off with the workers' compensation piece, we have um, excess insurance that begins at half a million dollars so below that per claim, we cover those losses. Um, it's administered by a third party administrator, Everly Vivian. 
Um, and the benefits team is the main, uh, the main host and uh, manager of workers' compensation, and it is an employer paid benefit. And here we're looking at what we're talking about for numbers. So for 2020, we had fewer claims. We had 32 total claims, and the cost was about 440,000. Um, one thing I want to point out here is the large decrease between 2015 and halfway through the year of 2016. And this is where the uh, Renton Regional Fire Authority, the RRFA, did split off and become its own entity. So um, as one would expect, workers' compensation very much decreased, both in the quantity of claims received as well as the cost. For unemployment, this is also an employer paid benefit and man it's managed by the labor division within HR. For 2020, we did have more claims. Um, we also had a higher cost of claim um, and for, with a total of 99 claims and a about 142,000. And two thirds of those claims were separations for supplemental employees related to the pandemic. For property losses that come out of the 502 fund, we um, losses that we see are within our deductible for $50,000 and below, and that's per occurrence. That is managed by risk management. Uh, this slide gives us a little idea of when we're talking about these property losses, we have the value of insured property for the city is um, over $334.5 million. So we're talking a lot of value with our property. And some of the losses that the city um, experiences are covered by the 502, and not all of them are. Um, I won't go into too much detail about that, but last year we did see a decrease, and um, 35,636 was the cost to rent in property losses. Liability is another cate a large category of, of claims and losses for the city within our self-insured retention, with it, which is a quarter of a million dollars and, bo and below um, per occurrence, we, um, we uh, manage those claims and losses from the 502. It's managed by the risk management division. And we see a variety of liability claims that come in. The most common are property damage uh, in particular, automobile accidents cause a lot of damage um, and, and cause claims and bodily injury as well. We see those. We see fewer of the civil rights violation and they will they are typically high visibility when we do receive those. And I want to mention that uh, our partnership with the city attorney's office is absolutely vital in us handling all of these, each of these. This graph, this graph gives us a, an understanding of how many claims we see per year. Last year in 2020, we had far fewer claims come in, just 37. Um, it actually was so much fewer that it, the 10-year the average was previously 70 claims per year, and it's now 65 claims per year. This is broken down by division and then by department. And again, this is number of claims. And so this, this graph does show, uh, is pretty indicative year over year. Mainly public works will take up the majority of the number of claims that we receive and police shortly there behind. Um, it does not mean that we're liable for each of the claims that we receive. We settle about 30 to 40% each year, which is a, a relatively good indication of our liability level. Um, and again, the majority of claims that we see are from automobile accidents. So those are the numbers of claims. What is that, how does that translate to dollars? 2020, it was about 118,000. Um, and you'll notice some of these, these years that have high settlement amounts had large settlements, so had one large event, um, such as a water main break in 2015 um, and a police settlement in 2012. 
And so now I'll take us into the second category of expenditures out of the 502 account, which is a big chunk of, of the, the costs and expenditures for this account, and it's our insurance premiums. You'll see here our lines of coverage, which spans the board um, to make sure that we have our assets protected for the city. And property being a big piece of that, uh, the 2020 property insurance premium costs for last year were over half a million dollars. And that was up from, it was almost a 29% increase from the year before. And this I really wanna point out is a, a product of the, the insurance market itself. So we had been experiencing some really great uh, um, premiums and lines of coverage for about seven years prior to 2019. Um, and then just due to um, unfortunate events, uh, such as windstorms like Harvey and Irma and Florence and Michael, um, the severity and frequency in general of uh, wildfires, flooding events, storms, we're just seeing the insurance market really take a hit and, and they're translating that um, to, to their, their customers. Um, and so the hardening of the market is not something because um, the city itself, I want to point out, didn't have large losses. And so we actually do benefit from that. And still the hardening of the market is what we're seeing for these increases and the driver of that. And we are currently, um, I will be presenting to you for, our, um, for approval for our premium for um, our July 1st renewal. Um, and we are expecting about a 30% increase. Unfortunately, that story applies similarly to the liability side for premiums. We have seen a steady increase last year um, it was over 10% increase for 2020, the premiums for just the commercial general liability, um, $328,000 approximately. Uh, one thing I wanna point out on this page here is the decrease between 2015 and 2016. You'll notice almost $200,000 difference. Um, and this is due to us splitting um, and departing from Washington City's Insurance Authority risk pool. And it is um, really, we had the, uh, as part of the risk pool, Renton had, did not have large losses um, and the, some of those entities that were insured through the risk pool did. So it, in essence, we were subsidizing their losses. And so that's where you really see this decrease of $200,000 when we went um, in, into our own uh, fully self-insured program. Um, and, and that being said, we are still seeing the hardening of the market uh, on the liability side as well as the, the property side for insurance. And that's due to larger and larger settlements and verdicts coming out of jury trials. Um, and so when you look at our liability grouping of insurance, which does include the stop loss insurance that, that um, Wendy presented on, our public officials, our airport insurance, cyber insurance, law enforcement insurance, that whole host of liability groupings together increased by 22% in uh, 2021 and just this last January. And then for 2020, it had increased 15%. Um, and I really wanna point out here that again, it's not because Renton has had losses, it's really uh, driven by the market itself. And when we look at and compare ourselves to our neighbors close by even, um, right next door, they're having trouble getting lines of coverage and the lines of coverage they're able to get are, are costly. Um, so although we do look at this and, and kind of gulp and say 22% is, is um, challenging, we are doing, um, relative to others, we are, we're, we're doing okay. The third category of costs coming out of the 502 is administrative expenses to run the program. So we do have a broker that, that um, purchases our insurance for us and that's Alliant. We also have a third party administrator, Carl Warren Company that does our claims management. They handle about 15% of claims and we're able to save some costs by handling 85% in 2020 of our claims in-house. Litigation 
costs for defense do come out of the 502 as well. In 2020, we did resolve five cases. Um, and then uh, currently we have um, through 2020, four others to remain open. Um, and then another expense that is um, a, a, a worthwhile expense um, is our proactive approach to safety and taking care of our employees, which really does pay dividends. Um, it's been shown to have a one to three um, return on investment where we invest um, with investments in good safety programs. And then uh, finally, the fourth category, these uh, are funds that we bring back into the 502 account. And uh, roughly, so for third parties that cause loss um, property damage to city property, we're able to subrogate and recover some of those costs. Each year, it's approximately $100,000. And last year was um, right along those lines with um, just under $100,000. And so on my last two slides, just a little bit of additional information. Um, I want to uh, reiterate to council that the decision to go fully self-insured and depart from um, Washington City's Insurance Authority risk pool has benefited the city. It saved um, a lot of money, um, estimating over well, well over a million dollars in savings at this point in the five years. Um, it has, uh, again, we've, uh, the partnership with the city attorney's office has been fundamental to those savings and the successes, um, as well as um, in-house programs like safety and um, appropriate mitigation of the risk exposures to keep costs low. Um, and then lastly, touching on a couple ongoing concerns that um, we work through in risk management to make sure that we're mitigating and reducing our exposures. A new category of liability coming up with COVID-19. Um, I'm confident uh, that, or, and, and I'm proud that I believe our city has really taken care of our employees and put them at the center of decisions that we've made, as well as compliance with the law and regulation, um, and has, which has ultimately, I, I believe, minimized any potential exposure um, to risk and liability for COVID-19. And we continue to take care of our employees. Um, the aging subsurface infrastructure is and has been a concern as we see water main breaks, uh, breaking, um, water mains um, unfortunately uh, deteriorating and, and, and giving up after some of them being 100 years old under our, our streets. Um, and I know that that very much is a focus of our public works team and administrator. Police liability is always a, a, a risk area. It's a high risk job. And we see that um, currently uh, as well. Joint and several liability in Washington state having the potential to pay 100% of a claim if we're found to be 1% liable um, if the other party is underinsured or uninsured and unable to pay. And then public records violation is the last category of, um, of exposures that we have as a public entity. Um, and a, our credit to our city clerk, uh, who, uh, city clerk and his team who really make sure that we minimize our, our liability in this case. With that, what questions may I answer? Well, that's a fine presentation. Kelsey, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, uh, be before I take questions, I just do want to add a, another comment. Uh, so uh, thank you for, for managing this. And I want to say that um, um, I, I appreciate uh, your statement very much about the city clerk managing the public records. But I also want to extend that to all of the employees for helping yes. manage the liability. Um, and, you know, it's it's everybody really focusing on their, their tasks and and doing them in ways that are safe and protecting the safety of the public. And those really are impressive numbers. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed that the liability is down at that level. And it, I also commend you for the, um, the decisions about the insurance, um, you know, the excess insurance fund and, and how we were saving on the not, not uh, being part of the pool anymore. So well done. Um, I bet other council members have some comments or questions, so I'd like to see what, what they have to say. 
Yes, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Randy. You're absolutely right about it being a team effort. Absolutely. All employees are vital in, in each of those categories. Uh, any questions from council? Okay, um, I, I'm not seeing any, so uh, well I, I want to sure I'm not missing. Speak up if, uh, if in case I'm missing your your hand. If anybody has anything, okay. Um, well, great job. Um, I, um, I I appreciate it. Those are um, good management. It's nice to to see uh, those issues going so well, and. Um, I think with that, I'll go ahead and uh, unless anybody has any last, give me one last chance, um, I'll go ahead and adjourn the committee of the whole and we'll um, reconvene as a council in 25 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.